What's going on guys? It's Greg here, aka New York Prepper. In this video, I just want to answer a nuclear war survival frequently asked question. And this is the first video in a new series of videos that I'm going to be doing called Nuclear War Survival Frequently Asked Questions. And if any of you guys have any questions about nuclear war survival, feel free to email me at nyprepper85 at gmail.com or you can leave your questions in the comments below the video and I'll try to answer your question. And if enough people ask the same question, I'll make a video about it. Also, I want to remind you guys that on my website, newyorkprepper.com, you can go to the blog section and I have a lot of nuclear war survival reference material there. So check it out. I posted some critical information that you need to know on that page. Again, that's www.newyorkprepper.com in the blog section. I have radiation doses. I have halving thicknesses. I have nuclear war targets. And I'm going to keep adding more stuff that I think is important for you guys to know. But in this video, I want to talk to you guys about Geiger counters and dosimeters. This is a question that I get a lot of emails about and a lot of comments. So first I want to explain the difference between a Geiger counter and a dosimeter. Now, a Geiger counter, what a Geiger counter does is it just measures how much radiation there is in a certain area okay and the Geiger counter works by making ticking noises and when you put the Geiger counter closer to a radiation source it starts to tick more okay and that tells you that you're getting closer to some kind of hot zone or an area with a lot of radiation and as you back away from that radiation source the ticks will become less frequent and that's all a Geiger counter does. It just measures the background radiation and it doesn't measure the accumulated dose, which is what a dosimeter does. A dosimeter can do everything that the Geiger counter can do, but it can also measure your accumulated dose. Okay, that's why it's called a dosimeter. And if you're going to be trying to buy either a Geiger counter or a dosimeter, I would strongly urge you to purchase a dosimeter, okay? Stay away from Geiger counters because a Geiger counter is not going to help you when we're talking about nuclear war survival. It's not going to help you, okay? It's It'll help you a little bit because you'll see where the hot zones are, but it's not going to matter that much in a nuclear war situation because you know outside of your house, there's going to be fallout everywhere. So as soon as you leave your house, that Geiger counter is going to be going off like crazy. So it's not really going to be much use to you, okay? Geiger counters are better if you're trying to measure specific areas or specific materials to see if they're radioactive or not. That's what a Geiger counter is for. You really need to have a dosimeter. A dosimeter is critical, okay? You need to have a radiation dosimeter, not a Geiger counter, okay? I can't stress how important that is because the dosimeter is going to measure your accumulated dose, okay? The Geiger counter doesn't do that. So what is an accumulated dose? It's exactly what it's called, okay? It's an, a dose of radiation that you accumulate over time, all right? That's what the dosimeter measures. How much radiation are you absorbing over time okay and usually the units that a dosimeter works in is either going to be millisieverts or microsieverts or rems or rads okay those are typically the three units of measure that dosimeters are calibrated for all right now people have been asking me if you need to calibrate a geiger counter or calibrate a dosimeter and the answer is no you do not need to calibrate them unless you have some kind of very advanced Geiger counter or dosimeter that's used for scientific purposes. Then, yes, you might need to calibrate it. 
but normal dosimeters and Geiger counters, you do not need to calibrate, okay? And again, I would stay away from Geiger counters. They're not going to do you any good in a nuclear war survival situation, all right? You want to get yourself a dosimeter. So I want to just share with you my dosimeter that I have. And I've had this dosimeter for probably 10 years already. One thing that you want to do is you want to keep your dosimeter in a Faraday bag, okay? This is just a Ziploc bag. It's actually waterproof, but it's like a Ziploc bag. It's made of Mylar, okay? And I've done a review on this bag before in my gear reviews playlist. You can check that out. But it's basically just a Ziploc bag made out of Mylar, okay? And it's made to U.S. military spec Mil B81705 Rev C, okay? This can withstand what they call a super EMP, which is a special nuclear warhead designed to generate a very powerful electromagnetic pulse. Now, why do you want to keep your dosimeter in one of these bags? Well, if you go back and watch my nuclear war survival series, I talk about how all nuclear warheads generate an electromagnetic pulse, okay? Even if the warhead is not designed to generate an EMP, they will generate EMPs, okay? Every single nuclear bomb generates an EMP. So what good is it if you have a fancy dosimeter that you spent $300 on and it gets fried after the bombs go off, okay? Let's say a bomb goes off 50 miles away from you or 100 miles away. There's a good chance that all your electronics are going to get fried, especially your dosimeter, because dosimeters use small electronic uh, circuit boards, and they're very susceptible to EMP pulses, okay? So you want to get one of these Faraday bags and keep your dosimeter stored in this Faraday bag all the time, okay? Because you never know when that EMP is going to happen. It could happen in the middle of the night. and So keep them in your Faraday bag, okay? Now, I'll show you mine. And um, what I have here is also a waterproof pouch that I keep my dosimeter in, okay? All right, so I keep it in this waterproof pouch, all right? And this is an EcoTest Terra P, okay? And these might be hard to get now because this is a Ukrainian company, EcoTest, and I'm sure their headquarters were probably destroyed by Putin, okay? But this is a dosimeter. This is not a Geiger counter, and I'll show you the difference right now, okay? So here we have the regular Geiger counter function, and you can see it's measuring background radiation. And I'll let you guys listen to it so you can hear it. All right, guys, so you can hear that it's not really ticking a whole lot, and that means it's a very low level of radiation here in this basement of mine. And we have a reading of 0.12 microsieverts per hour, which is very, very small amount of radiation. Normal background radiation is between 0.10 and 0.20 microsieverts per hour, okay? So this is what a Geiger counter can do, all right? It can tell you the background radiation, but what I can do here is I can push a button and now it shows me my accumulated dose, okay? You can see here 0.494 millisieverts, okay? So half a millisieverts is my accumulated dose here, okay? And you might not be able to see that well because the light's reflecting off the pouch, all right? So this is what you need to know. You need to know your accumulated dose because remember, 
If you watch my How to Survive a Nuclear War series, I talk about radiation doses. And the radiation doses that you need to know is that radiation poisoning starts at 400 millisieverts, okay? So we're at 0.49 millisieverts since I turned this thing on, since I actually replaced the batteries the last time, which was about two years ago. So in two years, I accumulated half a millisievert, okay? That's basically nothing, all right? But radiation poisoning starts at 400 millisieverts, okay? So I still have a long way to go before I get radiation poisoning. And that's why you need to have a dosimeter. You need to be able to keep track of how much radiation you're accumulating. Because if, let's say, I'm in my fallout shelter and I've been in my fallout shelter for 10 days and I've only accumulated, let's say, 10 millisieverts, that's nothing. I know that I have a long way to go before I get radiation poisoning or before cancer starts. Cancer starts at 100 millisieverts. The maximum yearly dose for radiation workers set by the EPA is 50 millisieverts, okay? And the maximum allowable dose for first responders engaged in life-saving activities is 250 millisieverts, okay? So you need to know those numbers, okay? 400 millisieverts, radiation poisoning starts, cancer risk starts at 100 millisieverts, 250 millisieverts is the maximum allowable dose for first responders engaged in life-saving activity. If you don't have a dosimeter, you're not gonna know how much you're accumulating, okay? You're not gonna know. If you just have a Geiger counter, you're not gonna know if you've accumulated 10 millisieverts, 20 millisieverts, 100 millisieverts, you're not gonna know, okay? Because your device is not keeping track of that, okay? Now, an important thing with the dosimeter is you wanna attach it to your body, and this one has a clip, okay? It has a little belt clip, and you wanna attach it to your body because you want the dosimeter to read the radiation basically at your body. You don't want to put this somewhere and leave it because it's not going to give you an accurate accumulated dose. So you want it to be attached to your body or somewhere very close to you at all times so you know what you're actually accumulating and not what your kitchen table is accumulating, okay? So very, very important. You want to get a dosimeter, not a Geiger counter. That is absolutely critical. And I really love this EcoTest therapy. I've had it for 10 years. It runs on AAA batteries, and it'll last like four or five years on a single set of batteries. It's really impressive, this unit. And it's a Ukrainian company, so it's probably going to be hard to find now with the war going on over there. But if you can get your hands on one of these therapies, I highly recommend this dosimeter. It has a lot of other features, too. You can set a threshold. And I'm not being sponsored by them. I'm just sharing a good product with you. It, it has a threshold, so you can set the threshold. And what that does is if the background radiation goes above a certain point, this loud alarm starts to go off, okay? So this way you know that the radiation outside is, is too high or something like that. Um, but wanted to just share that with you. Now, also, when it comes to dosimeters, Another thing that I highly recommend, in addition to the Faraday bag and the waterproof pouch, you also want to get yourself an analog dosimeter, okay? And why is that? Well, what happens if this does get fried in the EMP? Even with the Faraday bag, something happens to it. Let's say I, I drop it on the ground and it breaks, or I crush it, I step on it, you know, uh, I drop a sandbag on it when I'm making my fallout shelter, something, whatever, something happens to it. It's an electronic device. It's a precise electronic device. It's a precision tool, okay? Precision tools are always prone to fail. So you want an analog dosimeter so you can still measure your accumulated dose without anything electronic. And what I have here are these rad triage cards okay the name of the company is rad triage and i've done a review on these but what this does is it's just a color-coded card and it fits in your wallet actually or you can hang it 
around your neck. And what it does is based on how much millisieverts you're exposed to, this bar in the middle here, this long bar, will change colors based on how much radiation you're exposed to, okay, how much you're accumulating. And so you can see it starts at 50 millisieverts. It's like a light green, and then the green starts to get darker. And then once you get up to 500 millisieverts, it gets up to black, and that's the area you don't want to be is over 500 millisieverts because that's when radiation poisoning starts, all right? But this is a good thing to have. I have a couple of these just in case my electronic dosimeter fails. I highly recommend these. They have all different types of brands. They also have stickers. You can put stickers on your shirt. So this way, you know, you know that it's always there and you can measure it up against what your electronic dosimeter is reading. But the name of the company is Rad Triage. But I wanted to just explain this to you. The difference between a dosimeter and a Geiger counter, it's very important to know the difference. And I would not waste my time and money in a Geiger counter. Get yourself a dosimeter. It's much better and it's really absolutely critical. You need to be able to measure your accumulated dose, okay? And going back to the fallout shelter example, let's say you're in your fallout shelter and it's up to like 10 days you're in your basement or, you know, let's say you're in the basement of a school or something and you're sheltered in and it's about 10 days have gone by and you see on your dosimeter that you've already accumulated 200 millisieverts or 300 millisieverts, okay? You know that you can't go outside. You can't expose yourself to any more radiation because if you expose yourself to more, the chances of radiation sickness increase dramatically because you're already at 200 millisieverts or 300 millisieverts, okay? You're getting up there in terms of the accumulation of radiation. So that's very, very important. You need to know how much radiation you're accumulating. So this way you know if you can go outside and do some chores or if you have to stay in your shelter more than other people do. Okay, very, very important. And also if you do get radiation poisoning, it'll help the doctors who are treating you if you tell them what your accumulated dose was at the time of being taken in, it'll help them a lot because they'll know how much radiation you accumulated and they know if you're going to get severe sickness or moderate sickness or light radiation sickness. And the thing with radiation poisoning is that without a dosimeter, you're not going to know if you're going to get moderate radiation poisoning or light radiation poisoning or severe radiation poisoning because the symptoms are all the same initially, okay? It's further on down the line, weeks and months later, that you determine, oh yeah, okay, I had severe radiation sickness. And you're not gonna know that initially. Initially, the symptoms are all basically the same, whether you got exposed to a little bit or a lot. So it'll help the doctors if you can tell them that You've been exposed to a lot of radiation and your accumulated dose based on your dosimeter said that you got exposed to 800 millisieverts. You know, it's good for them to know that. So I wanted to just share that with you guys. OK, I hope you found this useful and I highly recommend you watch my How to Survive Nuclear War series. I talk about all this stuff and more in those videos. They're kind of long, but it's worth it to watch them because I go in great detail of all the things that you need to know about nuclear war survival. So that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching. Take care. God bless. And don't forget the three Ps. Prepare, practice, and persevere.